project, you're going to need some glue. If you have a glue stick, that's great because it's easier to work with. A little bit of Elmer's glue just to help the glue stick because sometimes it doesn't hold well. Um, newspaper. It could be any kind of newspaper. Just make sure it's thin enough because we're going to be actually folding it and making it into a sculpture. This is the start of a cat sculpture where it's going to actually be able to stand up. So I'll show you how to do this, but we first need to make these flat tubes to start our, our sculpture, our armature. Our newspaper, what you want to do is open up the paper, the other half aside. You'll notice that there's a fold. That's where you're going to fold because you're going to tear this sheet into three pieces. One, two. So you're tearing two times. See how dirty my hands are? All right. So once we have our newspaper in our hand, make sure the fold is on top. Go about a third of the way in. Okay. And then just tear it straight down. That's one. And then next. And now you're just going to cut this one in half right from the fold. And three. Okay. Do this with a bunch of paper. Um, to do this twirl and tail for my kitty, I actually use five tubes. So five of these. So I have three. I'd need two more. I would just do a whole bunch because you can turn this into any kind of animal. But I think a cat's easy because you have the tail to hold it to stand up. Okay. So let's put this aside. Let's start making some tubes. First thing you want to do You'll notice that it has two sheets, so you might want to glue it to itself. What I found that it's easy is to just glue the end, top end. And then when you close it, get, press it down. I would do it on something um, that's okay getting dirty. Maybe another piece of newspaper. I wouldn't do this on a white tablecloth and find yourself in trouble because you ruined it because of all the newsprint. See what happened to my hands. That's what happened to the table. So find something that you can use that's nice and flat and sturdy. Okay, so what you want to do is fold this a bunch of times. So first you're going to fold it about, well, about a half of an inch wide and you really want to crease it down. Between a half an inch and an inch is fine. Okay, so then you're going to just keep rolling it. You're going to fold it again. That's two. You really want to push those edges. Your hands are going to get dirty like mine. Two. And then you take the, uh, the, the glue stick and you just want to put the glue along the edge. Sometimes putting paper underneath so you don't get it all over the table is helpful. And I also add a little extra glue on the part that was folded. And then you just fold it over. And this part's important. You really have to rub to make it stick. Okay, and just hold it a few minutes. Back and forth. Okay, so you can make a bunch of these. All right, so what you're gonna do then after you're done making a bunch of them to make this, this is like a quill. People who do um, uh, sewing and quilt making, this is a, a technique that they use with fabric, but they sew it, they don't glue it. All right. So if you start on one side, this is after you make a whole bunch of these, you're going to first fold it over like that to get it started. And then you're just going to roll it onto itself. Okay. Once you get it going, it's a little bit easier. The start is always tricky because the paper doesn't know what you want it to do yet. You have to train the paper. Okay. So then what you're going to do is Add a little glue along this line and keep rolling it. It'll get easier, I promise. And as you're rolling it, it's getting wider. See how you have a swirl? I love it when there's colored paper in there and your swirl or your quill gets colorful. All right, so make sure you have a little extra glue on the end. Give it a little press and hold it down. Okay, then you're gonna get the next one. This time, I want to glue the whole thing first, just to get it started. And go right where you left off. Now we'll go in a little bit just so you can wrap it. 
And then you turn your quilt. See how it's starting to grow? And keep going and going. If you see that this paper starts to unravel, just kind of press the edges again. It'll flatten it out for you. It'll be easier to roll. And your quill will get bigger and bigger. Add a little more. And there you have that size. See, getting close. This is five, this was two. So keep going. You'll make it bigger and bigger. And then once you have it for this size, what you're going to be doing for the tail, you're going to go all the way around, but then stop the length of the tail. And then you're going to hold it. You can curl this a little gentle squeeze without creasing it. You'll have a tail that'll help it hold. And then what I did, I just held the two sides and I walked around the house because it's time to get moving. And I just walked around the house for a good five minutes and I'll show you right here. Okay, so now I have my body, my tail and a head, a little bit smaller than the body. Still have to keep holding this. And then this last piece, what I'm going to be doing is actually add two triangular ears. So I want to add some glue. Let's put that on my table. And I will go around one full turn. Use the table. I'll help hold it for you. Oops, it popped off. Okay, roll it all the way around. Okay. And the same thing. I would take this and go for a walk around the house, maybe play a full song on your radio uh, or your iPod or whatever you're listening to. And when you're done with the song, then come back and then we can start folding.